Yes, that is the official Chart Boost Dev House. We're getting started. Notification. Hey, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Uh, I see some familiar faces. I don't know if you were here yesterday, but thanks for coming out to the Chart Boost Dev House. We will have workshops and events every day the rest of this week. We have lunch coming later. Uh, so I'm excited that you've joined us today. I'm Megan. I do marketing here at Chart Boost. So if you have any questions, I'll be hanging around. There's also some other chart boosters here today. Uh, so today we have Elena Nizhnik, who is going to talk to you about influencer marketing. She knows her stuff. Not only uh, is she an influencer in her own right, which she is so shy to talk about, but maybe she'll answer questions after. She also heads up content development for Rooster. So I'm very excited to welcome her up here to share more about influencer marketing. Welcome, Elena. Hi guys. Um, if at any point in time you can't hear me, please let me know and I will project a bit louder. Uh, but yes, thank you, Megan. Um, I do had a uh, rooster uh, and I work with influencers every single day. Uh, and I guess I should say that I myself too am a YouTuber. Uh, and so this really is a dream job, guys. Uh, if somebody told me many years ago that I will get to play video games and then test out video games and see whether or not we think it's going to be a good fit for our influencers and get paid for it a few years ago, I would have thought that they're just trying to be really nice because I'm just out of college. But um, that's my job every single day. I come in, I get to work with influencers, I get to talk to some of the largest influencers on YouTube and Twitch, and I get to play video games and uh, just have the best time every single day. So um, here at Rooster, we work with many types of influencers. And I know influencer is such a buzzword. Everybody talks about it, but what is influence marketing? Um, obviously, it's not a rocket science. It is a marketing where you engage with a key figure who we call an influencer. For one reason or another, they have made it and you want to work with them. So um, there are many platforms on which influencers thrive. There is Snapchat, there is Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, you name it, there are so many. When we work with gamers and game developers, we see that YouTube and Twitch is really where the opportunity is. And that is where we work most of the time with our influencers. So why is influencer marketing important? Let's jump into a few of the numbers that Google has shared last year. So according to Google's research, uh, over 90% of gamers watch YouTube at least once a week, which I mean, I'm a gamer and I feel like once a week is way, way too low, once a day. Uh, but according to Google, over 90% of gamers watch YouTube at least once a week for gaming strategy tips and advancement tips and also for game recommendations. Now, to make this number even sweeter, over 50% of those views will be on mobile devices. And how many of you here are mobile game developers or you work with mobile UA? So you have these people ready to download your game right on their mobile device. Over half of them are on mobile devices. So a huge opportunity here, right? Now, let's talk a bit more about user acquisition. Um, how many of you here had UA or have done UA at any one point in your career? A few. So you probably will know that user acquisition channels over the last couple of years with the boom in mobile are becoming more and more crowded and the costs are being driven up. So you have yourself an untapped channel uh, with influencers where there is plenty of viewers, plenty of impressions, and plenty of opportunity to grab. Additionally, video has really engaged and growing audience. Um, as we've spoken about it, over 90% of core gamers, and Google defines core gamer as somebody who spends at least, I believe, uh, eight hours a week playing mobile games on their mobile devices. And so these people are tuning into YouTube and they're avid viewers. Now, I can spit out right now at least 15 channels uh, that I follow on YouTube and Twitch. And uh, you know, if you're going after gaming audience, you want to work with influencers because people that really truly spend time playing games on mobile, they will go and watch those people's content. And 
On top of that, YouTube is where gamers go shopping. App stores are becoming really, really crowded. According to the latest stats, there are over 2 million apps published on both uh, App Store and the Google Play, and that just makes discovery so much more difficult. So people that don't have time to browse through each category or even browse by keywords, you know, say you go and type cats, they're probably going to be 35 pages with just results that have cats in the key title. Uh, I think there's somebody locked out in the room knocking. Um. <laughs> somebody got trapped in a closet. Um, we'll let them out. <laughs> Um, so, so game discovery is much more difficult today. And uh, uh, when you have an influencer personality who has dedicated audience that's coming in and checking their content, the delivery is very, very easy. And finally, here at Rooster, we see that paid campaigns will lead to organic coverage. Uh, on our paid campaigns, we notice that over 30% of views will actually come post-campaign. So when you maxed out your budget and the I.O. is covered, uh, we will see additional views trickle in after campaign. And now let's also talk about additional opportunity of organic coverage. So say you're a small YouTuber and you feel, or influencer rather, let's not be uh, a discriminative of a platform, uh, you feel that you haven't quite made it. So you're not really out going, going out there and looking for sponsorship opportunities. What you do is you look up to your peers that have made it and they've been recognized by the community. And you sort of see, well, what is Nick at Night playing? You know, should I also cover that game? What is Gaming with Mold playing? Maybe I should play that game too. So when you go out there and you work with really influential uh, personalities, the lower tier influencers will in, tune, in turn tune in and watch the content they're putting out and they may decide for themselves, maybe I should play the game too. Now, you didn't pay them, right? They just discovered the game through another influencer. So there is additional opportunity for reach within the community without having to pay for it. Now, why should you try influencer marketing if we haven't made it uh, apparent enough? Let's talk about some additional numbers that Google has shared. So according to Google, 144 billion minutes are being spent on YouTube each month watching gaming content. Now, that's a lot of zeros, that's a lot of hours and a lot of days. And that's a whole lot of opportunity out there to tune in to people that are spending time consciously watching the content that they're interested in. Google also shared some other data points. And they said that in gaming category, the correlation is about almost one to one, which means that if someone has, let's say, a million subscribers, right, about 0.86 of that audience is going to tune in and watch the content. Now, we will warn you that these numbers will fluctuate greatly, uh, not only YouTuber by YouTuber, influencer by influencer, but also even throughout the time of the year. But these are incredible statistics. Also, at Rooster, on our campaigns, we see a nearly 25 percent install rate on our campaigns. Now, this is an average number, so let's keep that in mind. We've seen higher, we've seen lower, but average is what we're going for here. And as I've just mentioned, over 30 percent of coverage will come post-campaign. So this is something that is just driving the value to you throughout the life of the video. And if you work with influencers, whether on Twitch or YouTube, they have no incentive to remove the video from their channel after the campaign is over. So the video will continue to live on their channel, continue to drive uh, you know, uh, views and engagements, and continue to drive audiences to your game even after the campaign is over. Now, that is the value that is going to eventually uh, drive you better you know, eCPIs and, and better value overall for the campaign. So let's talk about what makes a game that influencers want to play. But before, I would really love to ask you guys, I want to make this really interactive. If you have any questions throughout, please go ahead and raise your hand, ask me a question. Uh, yes, please. <laughs> So the question was, how long does it take to finish a campaign, and whether it's throughout the life of the budget or until, uh, or if there are time frame. So it, when you work with a platform like Rooster, uh, I believe, at least with us, there are options in which you can run the campaign until the budget is filled, 
or you can determine and say, I would like to run this campaign for 30 days, and after that, please pause it. So what happens is when the campaigns get paused, uh, there is a fill-in period during which installs will still actually get charged for, but then after, you are no longer charged and the videos or the product will continue to remain on influencers' channels. Okay? Are there any other questions at the moment? No? Okay, so my question was, how many of you have tried to work with influencers either directly or through platforms or are looking to experience uh, influencer campaign marketing and, and sort of, you know, maybe a little test here and there. Yes, uh, tried or going to? Are currently? Okay. Yes. Okay. So a few hands of people. That's really great to, to, to see because, um, you know, just when I got into influencer marketing, people were very cautious about it, right? Because people felt like, well, I'm just going to give all my money to this one guy. How do I know I'm going to get anything out of it? So, um, you know, things are changing, right? You can track it. You can make sure that campaigns are driving the value that you're looking for. But let's talk about what makes a good game uh, for influencers, you know, because we've worked with many influencers with many games over the life of Brewster. And we kind of got a few uh, things that we think makes for the best game that influencers want to play. So uh, the first thing we always talk about is high replay value. So games today need to be made to uh, be... Uh, streamed, right? Not just to be played because you want to make sure that if you want to make your game the next YouTube sensation, the next influencer sensation, you want to make sure that your game is appealing in a sense of, I'm not just going to play it one time, you know, I'm going to continue to play it. Uh, can I create a dialogue with my viewers? Can I, uh, you know, can I make funny comments? Can I uh, create strategy and tips videos where I can really deliver value to my viewers? So high replay value is what you really should be going for. Games with in-app purchases will do really quite well. Uh, so this here is a uh, screenshot of uh, I chase one of our partners playing Clash Royale. If you guys don't know what Clash Royale is. Um, one of the most successful mobile games out there, right? And the value of having to open another chest, a new card is dropping, right? And and you want to max it out, or you know, uh, if you're if you have an RPG game, right? The new skin that is coming available, the new hero, the new runes, you want to be able to give influencers a chance to create content that uh, uh, is new and exciting for not just one or two videos, but let them turn it into a mini series or even series, right? There are channels out there that uh, build their entire audience based on just delivering everyday content for one game or another. So in-app purchases and perks are definitely uh, really quite important. And then games that have competitive and co-op modes. Now, of course, we've seen on Rooster games that are single player uh, games do really extraordinary well. But what we've seen is games that have a co-op mode or, you know, one versus one, three versus three, live match, will just take it to the next level because this gives you an opportunity to not only play the game one or two times, but gives you an opportunity to play the game against your viewers. Uh, you know, drop a link, say, download this game, come join me. You can get matched against me. There is nothing that a, a, a fan want more than to go up against their favorite YouTuber and have a chance to beat them. Or even co uh, collaborate with your fellow influencer and say, hey, let's do a few videos here and there. You'll try to beat me, I'll try to beat you, and then we'll see whether or not our viewers like it. Chances are they probably will love it. So uh, co-op modes and, and are really, really important. So if you're building a game, um, just consider having some sort of you know, one versus one co-op, uh, some sort of interactive mode. And then, of course, if you are fortunate enough to get an opportunity to work with an established IP, that is an ultimate cherry on top. Uh, now, this way, when you work with influencers, you know, you have sort of a two, two ways to engage. You're engaging with core gamers, and you're also trying to, or rather able to reach out uh, to an audience that is very committed to a certain IP. I mean, let's just talk about Star Wars. Who would not want to have an opportunity to publish a game with Star Wars IP? That is in its own, just, you know, you sort of made it, right? And then and you have yourself uh, a whole 
millions of people that are committed to that IP that will enjoy your game uh, probably just even so much more. So it's not a must. Obviously, we are completely understand of the fact that not everybody will have a chance to do this, but if you can, that is definitely an ultimate cherry on top. So now that we've spoken about what games uh, or sort of what makes for a game that influencers will enjoy and what will uh, make your influencer campaign successful. Now let's talk about um, how to run a successful campaign because uh, obviously, you know, there are people here that are already running them or interested in running uh, marketing campaigns uh, with influencers. So what makes for a successful campaign? How do you run one? So first and foremost, we always talk about doing your research, define your audience. Now, Majority of this will be done during the soft launch phase where you will either uh, confirm your assumptions or will be completely challenged. You know, the audience that you may have thought was going to be perfect fit for you, you will find out that, hey, you know, a 25 to 35 year old females are playing my game. I thought this was going to speak to, you know, 13 to 22 males. Um, so that's something you'll find out during the uh, testing stage. But it is really important to come uh, to a campaign uh, when you're building a campaign to uh, identify these and know exactly what you're going for. This is important, right? And why? Because this will help you narrow down uh, influencers that are best influencers for you to work with. Now, this is going to be the easiest one. Define your budget. We all know how much money we have to spend. Uh, so done, super easy. And then we always talk at Rooster about the importance of tracking. We always talk about how Rooster is uh, performance-based influencer marketing. And you know, if you run influencer marketing, you have to use tracking. Now, we understand that there may be developers out there that are not able to integrate with a third-party tracking provider. And so, you know, you don't have an SDK, but we always talk about if you're going to spend money, you really have to know how well you're spending, which channel is doing better for you. So you can make smart decisions, not just during this campaign, but going forward. So um, tracking is just so, so important. Um, if you were to invest money, this is definitely something you need, uh, in our opinion, rather. Um, and then you go ahead. Yes? So we were majority of the uh, clients we work with are um, typically using um, Kochava. We see a lot of people use Adjust, uh, AppsFlyer, and uh, has offers MIT. So these are kind of the four um, that we see the most uh, most frequently. Uh, we are integrated with uh, these four um, tracking providers. So uh, Matt, uh, Kochava, AppsFlyer, and Adjust. These are the ones we see quite often. Uh, AppsLR too is quite popular, but uh, we don't see it as much on Rooster. That's just maybe the nature of our business, but AppsLR as well. And then set, select your campaign strategy. Now, there are two ways you can go about this. You can do a DIY. We've all probably done a DIY in our lives. Some turn out okay, some not so much. So here you have an option of sitting down, so you defined your audience, you know how much you're gonna spend, you have an attribution set up. So what do you do next? You go online and you go to Social Blade and you look up people that are most influential in you know, this country and that country, and then you have to email them or maybe email their manager or email the agency that manages them and then wait until they get back to you and then uh, here at Rooster, we see that an influencer with uh, about 50,000 subscribers will get between one to four emails a day asking to review my game from you know, indie developers or product placement opportunities. And then uh, imagine the scale as you go further and further to people that you really want to work with. So somebody who is sitting at two and a half million subscribers on the channel probably gets an average of 15 to 35 to 50 emails a day. And so, and, and these are people that are producing content every single day. Sometimes the inbox kind of becomes the second priority or maybe the third because you have to pump out content every single day if you want to keep your users engaged so that subscriber count is growing, so your ad revenue is growing, so you can pay your bills and continue to be a full-time influencer. So. Definitely a very lengthy process. Uh, I've done this when I worked at my previous job as a user acquisition manager. That's how I did a lot of my UA. And uh, sometimes the lead time to a video would be between four to seven weeks before I would get a single video up. Uh, that's a lot of time, especially when you have goals to hit, especially when uh, you know, you, you're really uh, trying to 
perform well. So, you know, the review is coming up. Um, so DIY definitely is a very lengthy process here. And then again, when you do it yourself, the knowledge that we may have, uh, the proprietary data we may have on influencers, you don't have. So you're just making the best guess on how much this will cost me, how much should I spend. And then you can work with uh, managed campaign. You're, you can run managed campaigns with uh, various platforms and agencies. So they will already have uh, a portfolio of influencers and may or may not accommodate various fee structures. So let's get into the next uh, point here. So how much will this cost you? The simple answer, if you do this yourself, is this will cost you as much as an influencer feel that they are worth, right? When you have built an audience that comes in and tunes into you every single day, you may feel that your video is worth an X amount of money, right? And, uh, and unless you get that, you're not going to commit to that campaign because you're driving uh, 400,000 views a day on your regularly scheduled content. Why should you go and spend time you know, play another game because you, you really want to get to know it, be very well versed in the game. You don't just want to put a video out that looks like it's so not fitting to your channel because you will lose your audience's trust. It takes a while for influencers to play the game, realize they want to create content for it and then commit to it, right? So they will just tell you, I feel like I should get paid $15,000 and you say, I don't have that, right? So there are multiple campaign structures. There is the flat fee, where you pay for a video, whether it's a fully dedicated video or uh, a, an integrated video, um, then when you work with platforms, they may offer a second fee structure, with, which is a CPI now. Every single UA manager I've ever spoken to absolutely loves this because you assume absolutely zero risk. You only pay for installs that influencers drive. How much better could this get? You get to work with a personality and only pay for installs. And then there's a middle ground, um, the CPM campaign style, right? So this is where you're still backing out to an eCPI. You're only paying the CPM that you're comfortable with. And uh, this model is really familiar to influencers because that is how they monetize on their channels, right? Uh, Google ads uh, and, and also Twitch, right? They were running advertisement and, and that's how they get paid. So middle of the way. Now, which one of these is right for you? Well, it depends, right? What are your campaign goals? Are you going for a burst? Do you have a brand new title coming out and you want people to uh, sign up and get notified when the game comes out? Are you running a huge campaign where you're, you're worried about uh, reaching as many people as possible? Are you running sustained acquisition and you only want to pay for CPIs, uh, for, for installs? Or are you uh, trying to re-engage audience that maybe once played your game but has dropped off because the game is uh, mature, right? And so it could be a flat fee, it could be a CPI, it could be uh, a CPM campaign, but it also could be O3, right? Just because there are three types of pricing sets, it doesn't mean that you can only run one or the other. So here at Rooster, we worked with clients where we ran multiple campaigns side by side. And uh, essentially, we've spoken about how best for developers, of course, is CPI. You only pay for the installs that are coming to your game. Best for influencers, a flat fee. You put your work in, you made the video. There it is, your work is done, right? And then there is the middle ground where you pay the CPM, right? But this doesn't mean that you can only run one or the other. As a matter of fact, when you have uh, integrated a, a tracking, part, uh, a third party tracking into your game, you can run all three of these side by side, have uh, various tracking links uh, designated to each of the campaign styles, and then you can sit down and say, okay, my uh, value for the money really was better let's say, for a flat fee campaign because I got to work with one of the biggest influencers out there. So because we drove so many impressions and the impression to install rate was really high, I actually got a better uh, bang for my money there, right? Uh, or you can say, you know what, um, on the CPI campaign, because we ran with these influencers, we can look into the quality of installs. And here at Rooster, we actually allow you to see the quality of, of your user, not only uh, campaign by campaign, but also if you run a CPI campaign with 10 influencers, you can then break it down and say influencer one users were better quality than influencer three users. Uh, influencer four users stayed in game longer, but didn't spend that much, right? And you can share that data and then, you know, have a follow-up campaign with us with those sets of, of influencers. So, uh, you know, once again, you can run all of these side by side, important to understand where the value is best. So tracking, you'll hear that word many, many times. So 
throughout this talk, I've been talking about, you know, here at Rooster, here at Rooster, what do we do here at Rooster? So here at Rooster, we run fully managed campaigns for our clients. And regardless whether you're coming from a AAA studio where your team may be of 15 people and you have somebody who crunches the data all day, somebody who finish, uh, completes the integrations and somebody who, uh, you know, sets the CPI for each geo that you're uh, acquiring in, or if you're a mid studio with a few people on the team or you're into developer, right? we can help you come up with a, a full campaign um, a strategy and we'll tailor it based on your goals, based on your risk tolerance, based on your budgets. And, uh, you know, we really do pride ourselves on using the data from our previous campaigns to make these uh, best, uh, you know, uh, uh, to make these assumptions for you, right, and also cater to exactly what you need uh, in order to run the most successful campaign. Uh, we, I've mentioned that we're integrated with uh, performance tracking partners, uh, Matt, Kochava, Adjust, AppsFlyer. So if you have one of those in your game, we are able to track performance each campaign uh, by each influencer and really make sure that you're getting the best value for your money. Um, and in addition to that, we have a team of people that have spent plenty of time in the industry. So we know the influencers that may do well for you. Uh, and, you know, sometimes we have clients coming into us and say, I have $25,000. I want to spend with the biggest influencer you have. And, you know, that's usually the assumption, right? I have to go big or go home. And then we say, well, you know, we worked with uh, you know, a similar advertiser or with a, we work with an advertiser who had a similar campaign goal. And we've seen that by going to five or six smaller to mid-sized channels, they got a better result. You know, they got more for their money. So just thinking that you should just go for the biggest channel sometimes is not always the right assumption. So, you know, when you do this yourself, you know, there's so much that goes into it. You may not know all of these things. Um, we always recommend, you know, just reaching out to somebody who has this data and knowledge. And, and you know, data is, I, I know it, we all talk about data, right? But if not data, then how do you secure the success of the campaign? You have to rely on data. And here at Rooster, we have proprietor data on uh, campaign performance by influencer. So we can share that as well. So, yes, we are able to do that. Uh, we are able to do that based on previous campaigns, looking at maybe a similar genre or similar a game. Uh, and we can say, you know, uh, based on the budget that you have and based on the previous campaign, we were able to drive these many impressions and the uh, conversion rate was this and, and so on and so forth. And then again, uh, we have this data not only by channel but by genre, right? Because the conversion rate for a hardcore game will be very different than a conversion rate for a, uh, you know, very casual game. So that's again something that we can take into consideration and then just being able to break down the entire funnel uh, top to bottom really is helpful for you to understand where the value lies and how well will this campaign do for me um, and I've spoken quickly about our install rates of 25 percent uh, I mentioned that I was a user acquisition manager before I joined influencer world and uh, you know if I could have ran every single campaign of mine and have a 25% uh, install rate, I probably would have been employee of the month every single month. That is incredibly high. I'm sure many of you can speak to that. And as I've said, this is our average number. We've seen campaigns with close to 40%. We've seen campaigns with, you know, between uh, 13 to 17. Once again, depends by genre. So now let's take a look really quickly um, at some of our previous campaigns that we ran. And um, I broke these out by uh, fee structure because we've spoken about CPI, flat fee, and CPM. So this campaign here we ran for Ponos, and this was for Battle Cats. Uh, personally, one of my favorite games. Absolutely love everything about it. But uh, many of you may know who this gentleman is. Some of you may not. Uh, I don't expect everybody to be as much of a YouTube junkie as I am. But this here is Matt Shea. Matt Shea is one of the most popular YouTubers out there. He started out as Sims 4, and now he's a variety player. So Matt Shea came and worked with us on Pono's uh, uh, Battle Cats campaign. And this was a um, 
campaign that ran over a course of seven weeks and we filled their budget within seven weeks. And, uh, you know, they've came back and added more budget and actually coming back with even with a bit more budget right now because the game just does incredibly well on YouTube and it is in its own a YouTube sensation. After this uh, talk, you can head to YouTube and type up Battle Cats and you will see just pages of content, uh, pages and pages of content. But what's really interesting about this campaign is that uh, Matt came in and uh, played Battle Cats for a few weeks after he saw it on Rooster, uh, for a few days rather, sorry. And then he said, I love the game. I think I know my audience. I think this will do well with my audience. So he created a video and after one video, I think it was clear, not just to us at Rooster, but also to him, that this will become a permanent feature on his channel. So we filled the campaign budget uh, shortly after Matt's video went live. And what happened next is that his viewers loved the game so much that he went on to make 24 additional videos after the budget was over. So that is absolutely incredible and just goes to show you that when you go out there and you make the right connection with the right influencer, just because your budget is gone doesn't mean that they will stop playing these games because their audience is demanded. You know, they're literally, they want another video and nothing else tomorrow. So uh, right now, Matt is on his Battle Cats episode number 25, I believe. Uh, and uh, he continues uh, he keeps on going, right? And he gets his cat food, which is the currency in the game, and he gets to op open his capsules, and uh, uh, over 250,000 people come in to watch those Battle Cats episodes on Matt's channel. So important to connect with the right influencers, make the right connections, and this will give life to your game on YouTube if you connect with the right person. And uh, the next campaign that we recently ran is for Playdemic. Uh, Playdemic recently came out with a new title called uh, Golf Clash, which uh, perfectly mashes the uh, uh, you know golf with a sort of Clash Royale sort of style of gaming, where you open your chest and you get your next golfs and your next you know the balls and things like that, right? Uh, and so we uh, actually partnered with Nick at Night and Gaming with Mold. These were flat fee campaigns. These are incredibly powerful influencers, right? Between two of these guys, they're able to reach over four and a half million people on their channels. So we partnered up with Nick at Night and Mold, and uh, this goes back to one of the game features that we discussed, right? In game, they're able to match each other. And they created uh, multiple videos where Nick went ahead and battled Molt, and then Molt went ahead and battled Nick, and they wanted to see who will do better. So they created two videos that were paid for by uh, Playdemic, and then uh, people you know, went ahead and commented, and the viewers kept commenting and saying, will there be a rematch? So the budget was filled, but because the audience demands, you know, you kind of, you become a slave of your audience when you're a full-time influencer. So they said, people demand it. And so they made another video after the campaign was fully filled, right? And, and once again, just making the connections with the right influencer does not always guarantee, uh, that, uh, sometimes can, can mean that after the campaign is over, it doesn't mean that if you don't have any more money to pay them, they will stop playing your game, right? And so this was a very successful flat fee campaign. Uh, we also recently ran a CPM campaign for uh, a company called Pixel Federation, and this was uh, a campaign for Digger's Adventure. By the time Pixel Federation came to work with Rooster, the game was quite mature uh, and not 17 plus, obviously, you can see by the graphics, but by the time they came to work with us, they had already driven over 1.5 million installs, right? So the goal here was to both reach new audiences, people that have yet to be exposed to uh, Digus Adventure, and also potentially re-engage uh, the people that may have once played the game, but have abandoned the game. The game uh, was on Facebook, a Facebook game, and now is mobile too. So we ran a very successful CPM campaign where we partnered with both English speaking and um, native speaking uh, channels across the world to uh, give the game kind of another breath of uh, influencer life on uh, influencing uh, partners platforms like YouTube. Um, so if you know how much money you have to spend, if you know your audience and you define your uh, KPIs before you go into a campaign, uh, you're able to make connections with very influen influential influencers. I know it sounds redundant, but with very influential players uh, and then make your game uh, an influencer sensation. So we've spoken a lot about you know, why influencers, why influencers are so important and why, you know, these certain features in game are important. So let's talk about our key takeaways here. The games that will do well with influencers are the games that have 
in-app purchases because you can crank out new content. Things never get boring. You can uh, uh, continue to uh, show more features in game. And then games that have high replay value. Uh, titles that allow to uh, have a competitive or co-op mods modes where you can uh, go against people in real time or your even your friends or your fellow influencers. And then, of course, the cherry on top is the IP. So, uh, you know, try to check those out. Or if you have an ability to add, add things to your game, you know, kind of consider what is the priority here. And then how can you run a successful campaign? So you have to partner successfully. We've mentioned that you can do it yourself. You know, nobody stops you from doing this yourself. There, you, can, you can go and do it, right? But the key message here is that you have to partner successfully. And if you were to spend your time partnering successfully, the time would be better spent partnering with a platform that have access to existing um, core gaming and influencer community versus doing this yourself. You know, going to uh, uh, people that have industry knowledge, and we're not just talking, you know, playing games since we were 12. We're talking every single influencer, what games work best for them, what genres, you know, whether or not we think, you know, this is the right price point. Will you overpay? Will you underpay? Uh, working with a platform that has uh, existing influencer community uh, it eliminates that chasing time, right? You know, we've we've all done UA, right? We want to run a campaign where you can set the KPIs, set the budget, sign the IO, have the campaign go live, right? We don't want to have to do all those things and then wait, uh, you know, 10, 15 weeks before you have your first video. And then, of course, um, having an ability to use the proprietary data uh, to best make decisions uh, and, and, and ensure that the campaign performance will be the one that you're looking forward to. And then, of course, being able to measure that performance uh, is extremely important. When you do this yourself with influencers, they may or may not want to actually place a tracking link uh, in, in the link of description, right? They may just want to give them a link to the app store, right? In which point you're going to have to go ahead and uh, look at the organic uplift, which is a way to do it, right? It's not a very good way to do it, but better way to do it. Uh, but when you run with a platform, you're able to measure performance uh, like I said, not just by the entire campaign metric, but also channel by channel. And that gives you additional data going forward. You know, shall you have more budget, you know exactly who to go to, who to spend to, because that's where you're going to get the best quality of user and the best retention. So we've covered all these. We know what makes a great game. We know uh, sort of the things you should know and uh, things you should have checked before you go and run an influencer campaign. And I hope with that, you're going to take this back in house and run a successful campaign and make your game the next sensation on YouTube. Thank you.